us, and it is a very broad category, which is one thing that we've worked on a lot in revisions because I, I purposely don't want to limit this family to one, one narrow or specific definition of their religion. They're a very open family. They pull traditions from a lot of different places. The way the little girl in the book finally ends up describing her, the family religion is that her mother calls it, her father calls it Wiccan, and her mother calls it not quite Wiccan. They practice a nature-based um, religion. They do spells, they use uh, divination tools, and that sort of thing. But I purposely didn't want to give it a name because their their religion doesn't really have a name. It's their family tradition. So I misspoke in the introduction because I said wicked. Sorry. It, it, uh, almost wicked, not almost wicked. wicked. <laughs> <laughs> How do you deal with the criticism that you receive? You know, when your editor says, I want you to change this, or this isn't making sense to me, or you read some kind of crappy comment somebody left on Amazon, like, how do you deal with that? Well, um, they're really, those are really separate. Um, I've never felt like I've gotten criticism from my editor. Everything she says has, uh, has her, you know, she has thought it through, she has talked it over with smart people. She is incredibly smart. I trust everything that she says on that paper, and so even if we disagree, I know she has said it for a reason, so I've never felt like anything my editor has wanted changed has been criticism. I felt like it's always in the best interest of the book, even if I don't agree with it. If I don't agree with it, we discuss it, and I usually either end up seeing her point or she ends up seeing mine, but, it, but it's not critical in any way. As far as bad reviews on Amazon and that sort of thing, um, I was waiting for those because I thought that might make me feel like a real author, <laughs> and, um, and, and it did, sadly. Um, I, I think that, I mean, I read books that are great, and I can tell they're great, and I don't like them. Everybody has different tastes, and that doesn't offend me, so, so I'll admit that it, it, the first time I saw a bad review, I you know, pouted for a few minutes, but, but it's not something that, that bothers me. You can't let it bother you because it, it's not somebody being mean, it's just people have different tastes in reading. Well, that person who criticized you had a really stupid screen name. So, <laughs> so you know. <laughs> really stupid. Other questions? Oh, yes, in fact. When you going from um, one book to the next book, how do you create different books without making them blend? Mm -hmm. It's like two different ideas and you're the same author and you don't want the books to sound alike because they're not the same book. Right, I love so that. So how do you deal with that issue? That's great. Um, I usually put a little time in between the two books, first of all, and I'll read a lot of things that are not related in the meantime and just take a break because I, when I'm writing a book like Libby, 17 days of being in her head, it was hard to break back out of that when I would start to write. I found myself talking like Libby on my blog. I mean, it, it was always in her head. <laughs> um, but if I take a break from the character and let the new idea sort of take root, it, it's really not hard to switch into the new head. And then the new, the character in the second book is so different from Libby, there was never a chance that I would accidentally slip back into Libby's voice while writing that. The only time I've really had trouble with that sort of issue is the fact that the two books I'm working on now, one is in present tense and one's in past tense, and I cannot keep straight which book I'm in, and so I do change tense a lot. But as far as character voice, I haven't had much trouble with that. Do you think you might revisit Libby at a different time? Like maybe Libby as an adult? Or? I doubt that I will. I love Libby, but I think I think I like where I left her. Um, I would love to play around with the idea of writing from G's point of view someday, though, her best friend in the book, because I love that character. But but I, I don't think, realistically, I don't think that I'll come back to her. I, I like where she is. Yeah. What surprises did you have? I've heard of uh, writers describing this process <coughs> where they had expectations and characters just took on a life of their own during the process. Did you have surprises? I definitely did have surprises. <coughs> most most of the book was a surprise as I worked through the first draft. It, it was it came very quickly and very easily, which doesn't always happen. It's, it didn't happen on my second. It is happening on one of my current ones. Um, but with Libby, I was I was almost surprised at every turn, and I guess it's because I was writing so quickly in between uh, teaching full time and commuting and didn't give myself a chance to criticize it or think, hey, does that make sense? And the story just kind of started to happen without me having to sit and think, okay, what's going to happen? Which definitely I had to do that a few times too. But, but um, as far as specific surprises as I wrote, um, the whistle was the biggest surprise that I had because I didn't think I was going to write a book with such a big question, is that real, is it not? And it, 
the factory whistle that she hears was um, something that came up very early on that I expected to wrap up at some point, but I didn't know how I was going to wrap it up, and then I just didn't wrap it up, and I liked that. Is there a real whistle? Um, they, well, I didn't think there was, and after my dad read the book, he said, oh, was that the whistle, the whistle in Richwood that you used to hear when you were little? And I said, well, I guess. I didn't know it was. <laughs> Maybe he heard it. <laughs> Maybe so. I should, I should let him know. <laughs> what about the orange cat? Oh, I loved orange cat, orange. even though I never met him alive. I mean, yeah. Orange cat is very real. Um, I was telling uh, Dr. Atkins yesterday that uh, humans in my books are fictional, but animals usually aren't. Orange Cat was my Henry Cat, and he was he was a very, very special cat, so he is memorialized in Libby. Um, sadly, he did come to the same fate. And um, in my second book, my there's a dog who is a very real dog. I couldn't make the stuff up. So she has to be a real dog. <laughs> that usually helps me get through that, that spot and get back on track. 